the result. Neither do you. And Peter Ingram is on your left. Matthew Dilks is on your right. Is it Phoenix? Amulet Titan. It's a Cavern of Souls into a Sakura Tribe Scout. An island here for Ingram into a Serum Vision. So he'll draw two. Excuse me. He'll draw one Scry two. Pardon me. Split the difference on the Scry. We'll head back over to Dilks. Dilks with another Tribe Scout. Pick up the Cavern of Souls with the Simic Growth Chamber and pass the turn back. Scalding Tarn here from Ingram. And now there's a thing in the ice. Ancient Stirrings time. It'll be an Amulet of Vigor. Vesuva will enter the battlefield untapped, copying. Looks like a couple uh, couple copies here of Simic Growth Chamber. So all these tribe elders, uh, tribe scouts rather, are tapping for two, and then there's Primeval Titan. This is way more enjoyable, sped up. <laughs> Slayer Stronghold in Boros Garrison, folks. They'll enter the battlefield tap, then they'll untap because of the amulet. Looks like this Titan's going to get a little bit upset. Just trying to figure out exactly which land to return with the Boros Garrison bounce trigger. Going to bounce Cavern of Souls. Now the Titan attacks us an 8 6. Vigilant Haste Monster, which means you get to search up two more lands. Looks like it's going to be Simic Growth Chamber and Teleria West, maybe, here for Dilks. A combination we do see often with this deck. Take that back. It's going to be a Korea Crossroads and a Teleria West. Those lands enter the battlefield tapped, of course, and then they will untap because of the amulet. And that's it for Dilks' third turn. Not bad. Not bad. Now, can Ingram fire back with four spells? And even that's not going to be good enough, most likely. Well, he's going to start things off with the Manamorpho. It's got to get started somewhere. So blue and red mana floating here for Peter. Next up is the Serum Visions. That's spell two. One red mana floating now. He'll draw, he'll draw one. Scry two. Pardon me once again. Looks like he's going to leave them both on top. Is there a faith that's going to be found here sometime soon? It'll be a Scalding Tarn. So him leaving them both on top is inconsequential. He'll get a basic mountain here. Will Peter Ingram. It'll be a lightning bolt and a lightning bolt. That looks like they're both going to go upstairs. And now Awoken Horror will do some attacking. Presumably. I don't want to assume. I think Ingram is doing some counting here on whether or not uh, Dokes can simply redeploy the player. We'll tell you if he needs to hold back on defense as a result. Oh, there's the Titan. Two gemstone mines. Slayer Stronghold. There's Sunhold and, and that. So that means that the Titan now has double strike, which means the Awoken Horror doesn't do a great job of blocking. Ingram's going to fall down to one. Had Ingram obviously not done that, he'd be dead. So let's let him continue, to, let him continue playing, but he is dead. So Matthew Dilks is going to very easily win game number one here over Peter Ingram. Amulet Titan very quickly up a game here over Is It Phoenix. Because Amulet Titan, if you know how to play it very well, is a very good deck, but only a few people know how to play it at this level. Well, there's a there's a mixture of the, the math and the operations is complicated, and then also the lines you're able to take, the different paths are very complicated. A lot of decks are one of the two, not a whole lot are both. And uh, it makes for very challenging deck to play and something that requires a ton of practice. Yeah, this is very much one of those decks that is both, is Amulet Titan. But Matthew Dilks, Edgar Megalish, Daryl Errors, three of the players here on the SD Tour that know how to play this deck, basically with a blindfold on. And they're going to try to climb up the SD Tour leaderboard whenever there are modern events with this archetype. And that does, you know, put them at a distinct advantage because this is also a deck that if you're a player coming to this tournament, you're probably not preparing very much for because you know not a lot of people are going to play it. 
which I find to be somewhat interesting, just the competitive advantage that one can gain knowing that, hey, I know a lot of people aren't going to prepare for the deck that I play. Yeah, well, I, I think it, you know, there's something about, there's not, people don't have the sideboards for the deck, that's one thing. I really don't think the deck allows for a lot of play on the other side of the table. It's not like you, you could make different plays if you had more experience playing against the deck. It's a pretty straightforward experience. You know what to blow up. It, the burden's really on your opponent to manage their operations the right way. Ancient Stirrings found a Simic Growth Chamber there for Dilts. An island for Peter Ingram is where things began. He did play an opt, and now he's got a thing in the ice with four ice counters on it. So we'll head back over to Dilks for his second turn of the game. It's a gemstone mine. That's an energy explosives for two. Pass the turn back. Now, Ingram could transform this pretty quickly. Wouldn't surprise you. But even when it's transformed, the casting cost is still two. An island there for Ingram. A Blood Moon makes things much more difficult, or at least it's supposed to. Blood Moon is supposed to be a card that's great against the deck that Dilks is playing. And in the past, that was definitely true. In the present, I don't know if that's actually the case. These players have come ready with cards like Coalition Relic, of which Dilks has three of in his main deck. So it's not like it's the first time they've had to play against Coalition Relic. Yeah, but or, excuse it, me, Blood Moon. It still complicates the combo kills because you know you're uh, you play Primeval Titan that's step one, and then you search for a bunch of interlocking non-basic lands to kill over the course of one or two turns. So. Even if it doesn't fully lock Dilks out, it does considerably slow down what he's up to. Manamorphose into a Thought Scour it means that thing the ice is down to two counters. Now it's going to head down to one, it appears. Thanks to another Thought Scour, and soon it'll be zero, I have to imagine. And there's a Lightning Bolt, so. Thing the ice will transform, and it will go goodbye, but Arc Life Phoenix will come in anyway for three points of damage. Let's head back over to Matthew Dilks. He's got to try to work through the Blood Moon, and he does have an answer here in Reclamation Sage. Vesuva will copy a Simic Growth Chamber, picking up a Gemstone Mine, and we'll head back over to Peter Ingram. An attack there for three is going to knock Dilks down to 11. There's a Crackling Drake. Now we're going to head back over to Dilks. Gemstone Mine, three mining counters. Don't have a great look at how big that Crackling Drake is, but I have to assume it's close to lethal in combination with that Arclight Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, the graveyard looks a little light, but uh, I'd be surprised if, if Ingram couldn't get to, you know, eight spells all told by the time he gets to the next turn. Primeval Titan might be searching up the crossroads and maybe a Vesuva hit or something close to that. Looks like it's going to be the Crossroads and Bajuka Bog. So the Bog doesn't do anything about Crackling Drake because it also counts Exile. But it does get a... I think there was a Faithless Looting in there, so... There's a Bolt. And it looks like that was going to be more than enough to get the game over with. So Dilks immediately concedes. And Ingram versus Dilks continues on for a third and final one as both these players checking in at 5-0, and two of the very best in the tournament, off to a great start here this weekend, but only one's walking out of here with a W. Yeah, Blood Moon was not the full lock, and in fact, Dilks was able to blow it up, but uh, just gave Ingram enough breathing space there to advance his battlefield enough. doesn't always have to be the full lock. Sometimes if you're applying pressure, just two turns of your opponent not doing anything and then them having to spend a turn blowing it up, that's good enough. Yep. And, you know, one of the nice things about this is that Phoenix deck, as I have continued to watch it here this weekend, is that the closing speed on the deck is it's fast. Yeah. It gets games over with quick. After it's done doing all of its manipulation, it kills you really, really quick. It's a, it's a pretty punishing deck. Dilks will be on the play here for game number three. He'll start things off the Teleria West for Peter Ingram with a deck that mulligans very little. He'll sacrifice a Flooded Strand for an island and do some can tripping. Serum Vision's draw a card, Scry 2. Yeah, and Ingram, I believe, has a Blood Moon in hand. We'll see if it's good enough here on the draw. Well, there's an amulet. So it may not be good enough. 
Thinking about playing a Boros Garrison now is Matthew Dilks. He will. Enters the battlefield untapped because the amulet picking up the Teleria West. Steam Fence untapped by Ingram. Pass the turn back. Maybe prepared to bolt in Azusa. Another amulet. Okay. Growth Chamber with triggers. With trigger. With trigger. Primed. Uh, no. Azusa. Oh, wow. Okay. Trigger in the stack, bolt it. Still really bad news for Ingram. Yes, it is. There's prime time. Jeez. Tell you what, this deck is explosive too. What are you saying because of this third turn? <laughs> Slayer Stronghold is going to enter the battlefield. Masu is going to copy Boros Garrison. Threw a bolt on a creature. Yeah. That mattered, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> Might be time for the Sunholm, too. Yeah, but I think Blood Moon's going to be too slow in this you one. You think so? You think so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we just see how it plays out. Sure, yeah. I think maybe. See what happens. Yeah. Simic Growth Chamber and Teleria West are the fines. Peter's going to play an opt, it looks like here. He's going to take a bunch of damage. Untap and draw. It's not a Blood Moon game anymore, folks. Dilks was too fast. Well. He goes to one, I right? guess he goes to one. Although I suspect, you know, Dilks could have just found a forest for pretty low cost through all this. And he still can because he gets to attack. Yeah. So there does the forest, and they enter the battlefield on tap because the amulet. So... No shortage of basic lands in the deck to be able to, to do what he wants to do. Summoner's Pact is going to Reclamation Sage. Reclamation Sage is going to blow up the Blood Moon, play a land for the turn. Transmute Solari West, probably go. Oh, get another green pack? Sure, man. <laughs> EE on three. Look, I. Will Dilks remember the patch trigger? Yeah. Look, I just believe that all of Dilks' plays are correct because he never loses with this deck. Can you remember the packed trigger? <laughs> Here's an opt. Well, that's that's Peter's out. <laughs> Let's hope he forgets. He didn't. Right. That's game. Matthew Dilks is going to win this game and match here over Peter Ingram.